Hello! So today we're going to be doing pork chops with mash and veg in a creamy mushroom sauce. We have all the ingredients laid out in front of you and I have a few pieces of equipment which I am going to need to make the mash and do the veg. I'll introduce you. So here for the equipment we are going to be using a trivet with a basket. This is more or less an air fryer basket but we can use it to hold the potatoes above um, the pork chops, which means that we can make the mash all in one. We're going to need some tongs for the pork chops, a masher for the potatoes, and something for stirring. Not to mention the bowl. We have a steamer basket with the frozen vegetables ready to add. Now this is going to be for the side portion of vegetables. All we need for the side portion of vegetables are the vegetables themselves, a steamer basket, a cup of water, and a crock pot ready to go. Now this is aimed at steaming the vegetables as a side, and this will be a separate thing from the main recipe. We have potatoes. Now there are two types of potatoes I've added here, and this is what I recommend. If you use your regular potatoes, and as well incorporate sweet potatoes, it gives it a bit of colour and a little bit more nutrition. White mushrooms or chestnut mushrooms. Um, the chestnut mushrooms are fantastic, they add a bit of colour to the dish and that's going to be used at the end for the sauce. We have pork chops. Now essentially there are six pork chops here and we'll be leaving them whole, frying them and making them ready as the main dish. We have onions. Onions are going to be used for the sauce. Corn flour. Corn flour is used to thicken the sauce. We have the seasoning next, and this is for the pork. We have your paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, thyme, tarragon, salt and pepper. We also have, for flavouring, Worcester sauce, butter. Now I've pre-melted the butter, so that's 30 seconds in the microwave with approximately three tablespoons of butter. And for the mash, obviously we have the potatoes but we tend to want to add some milk to make the mash creamier. In order to fry, we're going to be using olive oil today. And last but not least, white wine for flavouring the sauce. So, let's begin. We also have an immersion blender. Now this eventually will be used for the sauce, and that's going to be to ensure that the sauce has a nice thin consistency. There are two options with this. You can either leave the sauce as it is with the mushrooms whole, or you can use an immersion blender like this, just a plug-in type with blades, and that will blend it down into a creamy, thick consistency with no bits. So that would be smooth. So first things first, we need to set the crock pot to saute. and remove the lid. Meanwhile, we can place the frozen vegetables into our other pressure cooker. Whilst we're waiting for the main dish to come up to temperature. So next we want to add the olive oil. This will be used for frying the chops. Now with the pork chops, there are two options with the seasoning. You can combine them into a bowl and add them all as one, or you can ply the seasoning over the pork chops separately. 
So we've added the paprika. We now want to add the salt and pepper. The garlic powder. And the herbs will be added at a later stage. So now the crock pot's beginning to come up to temperature. It's about two thirds, three quarters of the way there. We just want to begin to add the chops. These are essentially loins, not pork chops. You can use them either or. Um, loins tend to work out a little better value and they have no bone. They're ready to use as they are very little fat and they're absolutely ideal for this dish. So we want to do these in two batches. The first batch in three and the second batch also in three. My suggestion would be to have a second pair of tongs to hand, that way you have a cooked and a raw and it just makes things a little bit safer when you're handling your meat. Having a plate to hand to place the pork chops once they're cooked onto, ready for the next stage, means we can move the first batch onto the plate, ready for the next batch. So these don't need very long to fry, it's just browning in the centre. So the first batch is done. You can see by the charring, we're just browning the edges of the pork to give them some colour. These are ready to remove. So we have six loins pre fried ready for the next step. For the next stage, we want to fry the onions. And this is where we're going to want the spatula. We also want to add the thyme. Now I may also add all of the herbs we're using today, with the exception of the flat leaf parsley for garnish, are dried. Salt and pepper. Now the tarragon is quite a delicate herb, well they'll add that towards the end and that will flavour the sauce. Once the onions begin to look translucent, we can add the mushrooms. So next step, we can add the mushrooms. Now to prevent the mixture getting too dry, we have our butter. Which we can add. And our dried onions. That's a dried onion powder. Now we just give it all a stir.
So next we can add the Worcester sauce. We're ready to add the white wine. Now I'm quite a big fan of salt and pepper, not so much on the salt but more so for the pepper, so I tend to add a little bit more. When I can. So we can switch the saute browning mode off. and begin to pressure cook the chops. So in order to pressure cook the chops, we want to put our raw tongs to the side and begin to use our cook tongs. And layer these on the top. Now there's a lot of juice on the plate and this is all pure flavour. So do make sure to add this to the pot as this will all help increase the flavour. Now we're going to be doing the mash on top of the main dish which means we can ply in the trivet, the basket and simply pour the potatoes into the basket. All we have to do now is check the lid is set to lock and not steam or venting. Place the lid on the top. We want manual mode and 20 minutes. Now, should you wish to, if you do have the Crock-Pot Express Turbo, you can press the turbo button which will make it cook faster. The original mode at the original pressure will cook for 20 minutes. By pressing the turbo, it will take it down to 12 minutes. Now, if you want this cooked slightly more to make it softer, you can always increase the time up to 25 minutes or so, but it's a matter of preference as to what texture you like from your food. So should you wish to, we can use 20 minutes regular or 12 minutes on turbo. Now whilst we're waiting for the main dish to cook, we have the side dish which are the vegetables. We just want to use a simple vegetable steamer, a cup of water, so we want to add our cup of water. Now this can be cold or hot, if it's hot it will cook slightly faster as it will come up to temperature more quickly. Add our frozen vegetables. Check the lid is set to closed and making sure the vent is switched off. Lock the lid and we want two minutes. Manual, two minutes. Now the vegetables will keep warm for a few minutes so even if the main meal takes slightly longer, the vegetables will keep and stay warm in the crock pot, which means that you do have a bit of time spare so you can keep them hot whilst you begin to serve everything else. We're also going to be making the mash, which will take a bit of time too. Giving a gentle tap to the lid will just pressurize the canister, which means that it will heat up faster. 
So the Crock-Pot Express has just come up to temperature and begun to count down for the 12 minutes as set. Meanwhile, the veggies are still coming up to temperature and pressure. Although it's not an exact science, the plan is to have them ready at the same time. I believe that about 10 minutes should be adequate. So once the countdown begins, I think it should take about 10 minutes for the vegetables to cook. When you begin to hear the steam coming from the crock pot as it comes up to pressure, a gentle tap on the lid will seal the unit, which means that it will come up to pressure much more quickly. So the crock pot's just come up to temperature and it's began the two minute countdown. We have five minutes approximately on the crock pot express, so they should come up to cooked at about the same time. So we've approximately one minute left to go on the crock pot as steaming the vegetables. I'm just going to add the funnel. So the veggies are ready, the crock pot, the crock pot has just finished its cycle and we can switch that off and then. You can see with the funnel it's diverting the steam as opposed to it rising, depending on your preference as to where you want the seeds to go. We also have just under three minutes for the main meal. So we can leave the lid on for the time being, it's depressurized, we've switched it off so it will stay warm for enough time for us to prepare the remaining and this means we can get the mash ready, get the sauce ready, get everything plated up, then add the veg. So we have approximately 30 seconds left until this needs depressurizing. I have a towel at the ready to place on top of the steam valve. My suggestion as well for removing the baskets are heat proof gloves. So you can have these silicon ones, you can buy them and use them specifically for that purpose, or if you wish to, an oven glove, a tea towel, or some tongs, whichever you prefer to use. The Crock-Pot Express is now ready to depressurize and has finished cooking, so we can switch that off, begin to depressurize, place the towel over the top, So at the moment, I'm going to use these silicon heat proof gloves as they've got excellent grip and they're very easy to put on and take off just to move things across as I need to. If you wish to speed up the time of depressurization, you can lift the valve and that will remove the steam faster. So in order to move the potatoes, we have our heat proof gloves. So we can remove the trivet and the basket. So in order to make this slightly creamier, we just want to add the milk to the mash. Here we have the mash ready to serve. We now want to open the lid for the vegetables. Have our plates at the ready. I'll move three loins.
onto each plate. Now the quantity of loins that you serve depends on your preferences, depends on how much you want to eat. For the next step, we want to add the tarragon. As I said before, the tarragon is quite a delicate herb, therefore you don't want to overcook it as you will lose a lot of the flavor. Just want to add this to the mushrooms. In order to make the sauce, we just want to brown, saute for a couple of minutes to bring this up to temperature. So now we can begin to hear this boiling. It will begin to thicken. And depending on whether you like the sauce with the mushrooms whole or whether you want to blend it down to a thinner, smoother consistency, all depends on your preference. So now this has come up to the boil, we can switch this back off. My preference is for a smoother consistency. So I'm going to be using the immersion blender. Now that the sauce is ready, we do have a couple of options. We can add extra cream if you wish to. That will just give us a slightly creamier, creamier consistency. So you can add more cream to this. My suggestion is add another half a cup of cream, but I've left this out so that the option is entirely yours. So now we're ready to put everything on, onto a plate. We have the mash. And last but not least, the sauce. To serve, there are three main types of mustard. My preference would be to suggest the French mustard. French mustard is very, very mild and it has a lovely flavour, which would be a perfect companion to the veggies and the pork and the mash. As for the veggies, my suggestion would be whole grain mustard. Whole grain mustard pairs very, very well with veggies and with mash, so that would be a suggestion. I would suggest try, if, unless you particularly like it to be very hot and spicy, 
yellow mustard or English mustard is very, very spicy and that might overwhelm the dish. It's a matter of preference. Me personally, I would choose French mustard. along with whole grain mustard. Now it's time for the taste test. The mash is perfectly fluffy. The pork is perfectly tender. The vegetables, in my opinion, are just right. And the gravy, the flavor is out of this world. My suggestion would be to pair the mustard with the broccoli and the veggies. As that gives it a fantastic flavor. Well worth trying. We've garnished this with parsley to give it an extra touch. That just gives it a level of nutrition and a level of vibrance that you wouldn't otherwise get. It just makes the dish pop and adds a form of decoration that I feel makes all the difference. So this dish is one of those more elaborate meals. It's still very, very simple to make, very quick to put together, but you can see this is the kind of thing that you would bring out on date night or something that you'd really want to pull out all the stops pork loins with mash, veggies, a bit of mustard on the side, you have your mushroom gravy, all homemade. It really pulls out the stops and this is really gonna make an impression if you wanna make a good dish. I highly recommend it and the taste is out of this world. If you want to learn more about the basics of Crock-Pot, Crock-Pot Express, Crock-Pot Express Turbo, or whether you want to take your cooking up a notch, please subscribe as I've got lots to show you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.